this bridge project started about, I think about six or seven years ago. Um, shortly after I designed my first bridge, uh, which you have seen in, the, uh, in this channel previously, I, I wanted something which is like, well, definitely bigger. I wanted more span. My original bridge was one meter. This is one and a half meters. And I also wanted something closed. Uh, and um, I really like truss bridges and, and, you know, all the intricate details. And uh, originally what I had in mind is um, that I would design a curved, I think this is called a curved truss bridge. And then to accompany this, that would be a shorter bridge, something like here, which would have a straight uh, cord. So not a curve like this. And so that would create a multiple, you know, segment, really long bridge. So this being one and a half meters, and then you can add like an extra one meter at each end. And the, the plan has been drawn and it's been sitting in my computer for, I don't know how many years. And then a friend of mine contacted me and he was building his uh, garden and railway and he really liked the bridge. And he said, can I have that bridge? But I need higher because uh, he is running like USA trains and aristocraft and he has double stack containers and he wanted to make sure that it fits. So I pretty much redesigned the bridge because originally I designed it for gauge one. So the, this, this level here where you see these uh, trusses in between, these were lower. Uh, so I designed it higher and we <laughs> I think he, um, he asked me to redesign it before he ordered the, the wagon. So we couldn't, we couldn't really tell how high they were with the, with the rails and everything. And it turns out that he could fit the double stack container wagons uh, just with a few millimeters to spare between these trusses. And when I wanted to print mine, I was also thinking that, you know, sometimes I have guests, they also have LGB and, um, you know, higher scales what maybe somebody would have like a you know an american um, branch line locomotive which usually have a really high smokestack so i thought maybe i am just going to print the same for myself even though i definitely don't need a height for my gauge one stuff and um, that's it is so i got this a cnc cut i think uh, roughly about a year ago and it was sitting in a garage for a long time and i started assembling it during this winter and I think I'm going to freehand the rest of the video so you can see the details of this bridge wise side talk. So I got the, um, uh, the, the bridge cut and it is from one millimeter stainless steel. Uh, I wanted stainless steel because I was pretty sure that I won't be able to, you know, properly paint this because of all the intricate details that I wouldn't be able to get a paintbrush in. I'm not really good at welding. So definitely I, um, I wanted either uh, gluing or soft soldering the bridge and uh, so galvanizing is not really an option because I think that's done under heat and that wouldn't survive if it's uh, maybe it survives the glue, glue but probably not the soft soldering and that's the only technique that I know so anyway and so most of this bridge is actually soft soldered and then the final details are glued using I think it's some sort of CA glue, which seems to hold up in in water, so it's like outdoor rated. And um, so I did a few test pieces. I submerged them in water for a few days. I left it outside for a few days, and they seem to be holding up without any issues. So if I just explain the main, you know, pieces of the bridge, and I'm just going to cut in some of the my um, assembly videos that I've taken with a like an action camera. So there is one main piece, which is this, uh, this uh, f uh, I'm not sure what it's called. It's like a floorboard and it's, it runs the entire length of the, uh, of the bridge. And then I have these cross sections, which is U shaped like that. You can see, oops, so you can see the join there. So it goes through like this and that holds basically all of these vertical members. You can see the small cutouts, how I get the, you know, the, the different pieces to slot together. So that was the first step of the construction. I've done it upside down and you can see the, the details here that these are actually soft solder together. So you can see the soft solder joints there. And that was the easy one because I get, I can get this really big 
150 watt soldering iron and then just basically use uh, uh, flux and or soldering fluid and then you know touch it heat it up both parts and then just flow the solder i i haven't done the entire length i just done like a like a two centimeter strips and that you know seemed to be enough more than enough for this bridge and then once i was finished with that i think the next step was to get these side pieces on and again this is one single piece so one and a half meters long and then the entire side of the bridge and once i was done with that there was another side sorry another piece which is this one again one piece so as you can see the side of the bridge is these vertical members and then the two parts which is the inside and the outer sorry the inside and the outer part and on both sides and that gave me the you know the basic structure from let's say from the from the bottom and then to close it up i have these cross braces which go all the way through and of course they are different sizes because this is like small and as you go in it it becomes uh, taller and taller as you can probably tell from here I'm sorry for the audio but my neighbor is trimming the bushes for like two days now it's really annoying and so I was managed to slot this in from the top and you can see the cut there and that sort of like holds the the top these vertical pieces together and then finally I was able to put the these panels in, on and as you can see the way it is designed that the first let me get this in, in frame so the first free section is one piece and then uh, the and the angle changes here so I have two pieces and again two pieces and then another three pieces and and I've done this upside down and I've actually soldered all the way through here I'm not sure if I can show an angle where it's going to be visible the Sun is really bright at the moment so that's all the way you know soldered all the way through so most of the major components and by the way if it's visible here you can see the solder as well so there's like one piece of solder there there is another one there so I haven't soldered all the way through but it gets you know it, it pretty much welds all the, the parts together and I can you know easily lift this bridge using I mean just holding on like that or maybe like this and and I just lift it up lift it up it's really solid and once I was done with that that was pretty much like 80% of the the mass of the bridge and the structural elements then I had these lattice pieces I'm not really sure what it is I mean that just uh, stiffens up these uh, diagonal members and these were glued on so I tried soldering but it is really hard to solder um, like a 90 degree connection from the outside because I can only get one of the part warm enough and the solder just wouldn't, wouldn't flow I tried on the first one and it just took ages and and I failed so I ended up again gluing uh, the these pieces on with CA glue and there is actually a lot of um, small joints here because if you can tell but these so this big plate here this has like one times one time one notches and then uh, these lattice had like a one one by one by one cut out here so they all had to fit and I was quite nervous in the beginning because I thought if these two plates on the two sides are not perfectly aligned I won't be able to fit these uh, lattice pieces on but maybe because of these slots and acting as registration points I mean sometimes I just had to use pliers just to force these uh, pieces on but um, it was fine so everything sort of fit and I just glue out the pieces and you can see some uh, you know glue runoff from here and there and the plan with this bridge is I would like to paint it um, 
as I said, this is stainless steel, so this would be able to survive um, the winter on its own or, you know, the external elements on its own. But uh, this is not, um, you know, a color which is really prototypical. So I think I would like to paint it just uh, to, you know, to be more prototypical and uh, maybe just use some gray, you know, primer paint. But I'm not really sure how successful I'm going to be, especially getting all these, you know, small details and... Um, yeah, so time will tell. And I'm not really sure when I'm going to have time for that. So this is why I thought I'm going to shoot this video. So you're going to see the sort of the finished constructed bridge where most of the details are visible. And then we will see how it finally ends up when the, the paint is on. And you can see the underside structure. Yeah, so there is this plate, which is the base. And I also have uh, two... Um, diagonal members which go all the way through so obviously that stiffens up the bridge as well so there is a fair amount of material in this but i don't think it weighs more i haven't weighed it but i don't think it weighs just uh, more than a few kilos so it's not a huge amount of steel after all oh yes and um, also one of the last step was just to get these plates on which again just closes the bridge from the from the underside so if you look at this section here it looks like a big i-beam because it has like this top part and this bottom part i mean of course they are cut from different parts but um i think it in inner prototypical bridge that would be probably an i-beam and i got this cut out because i think that also looks more like how a real bridge looks like and i think i'm going to use these cutouts just to run some cables to get the power feed through the, the bridge. And then at the really end, I've designed these small feet. So that's where the bridge is going to sit on. So as you can see, I have loads of space to spare above my gauge one loco. And um, this is my biggest loco by far at the moment. So. Yeah, it's pretty much just like, sort of like half the bridge. So I think in retrospect, I'm quite glad that I've gone for the, definitely for the longer bridge, one and a half meters. I think probably two meters would have been a stretch, especially on my layout. I mean, it's not that big. This is pretty much going to be a focal point of my layout anyway. And uh, I'm quite liking the height of the bridge as well. So I think it's um, also really, really nice just to have this height. And I, I, I don't think it's too much. I mean, uh, a real bridge would be, would have the, probably the same proportions as well, if I just back out. So only time will tell how much more time I would need to get this painted. And of course, um, to get it installed on my layout. I mean, that's going to be a, a task on its own as well. So hopefully in a few months, probably it's not going to be more than that you will see this bridge being installed and real trains running through this bridge. That would be quite something, especially considering that it's been in the making for about seven years now. I think that's all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.